Okay, in our previous lecture, we talked about uh, fixed second law, and we, we developed that equation. So let me remind you of what that looked like. All right, so previously, we developed fixed second law. Okay, and it looked like the partial of the concentration with respect to time, so how is the concentration changing in time, was equal to partial with respect to x of d times the partial of c with respect to x, that's the concentration gradient, and we said if d was constant, we could uh, pull the d outside, and we ended up with partial squared of the concentration with respect to x squared, right? So we can say this if d is constant. Okay, let's call this equation 1. Okay, so uh, in this class, uh, you're not expected to know how to solve partial differential equations. And so uh, I'm not going to expect you to solve this here. Uh, I'll just say that the general solution to this equation is pretty involved. Um, and the approach that you take, uh, how you go about solving it, actually depends on the boundary conditions. Okay? So the general solution is involved. Uh, and the approach depends on the boundary conditions. Okay, so as a compromise, in this class, we're just going to look at one particular solution. So I'm not going to make you develop the solution. I'm going to expect you to remember the solution. Uh, on an exam or something, you'll be able to look up the, the equation, okay? So in this class, we're going to be interested only uh, in diffusion into what's called a semi-infinite solid from surface diffusion. So that's what we're going to focus on. So in this class, we're interested... Uh, in diffusion into a semi-infinite solid from surface diffusion. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, this looks like, uh, I'm, I'm going to draw a boundary, right? But this is just an infinite bar, let's say. So it goes off to infinity. But it starts right here. That's why it's called semi-infinite, because it doesn't run infinitely in all directions. It starts at a spot and runs in, into infinity in this uh, towards the right. Okay, so... We'll do this. Uh, we'll define this position here as x going into the bar, right? Uh, and and so this is uh, this goes on to infinity. Okay. All right. So 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 for example, that right there is our surface that we're interested in. And what we're interested in is basically holding. Uh, holding some concentration outside here so that the surface concentration stays constant, and then asking how does the concentration vary through the bar as a function of, of both position and time. Okay, that's the goal. So let's, let's, uh, let's talk about the boundary conditions here. So let's think about what's really going to happen. So at the surface, if we're going to hold this constant, uh, we're going to have, uh, so let me just say, a constant surface concentration, uh, uh, Cs, let's say, for surface concentration. We're going to have, we're going to assume that the initial concentration in the entire bar is homogeneous, right? And we'll just call that concentration C0. Okay, so the initial concentration is homogeneous. And we'll label that as C0. Okay. The last um, boundary condition or, or constraint we're going to put on it is that because this is an infinite bar and diffusion is happening, you know, over time, our boundary condition is going to say that at a distance of infinity, that concentration is also always the initial concentration. Okay. So uh, the next will be at uh, x uh, goes to infinity the concentration uh, is going to be equal to C0 for all time. Okay? Okay, so how about let's write the boundary conditions formally. So the boundary conditions and the initial condition, right? So we remember we had uh, the equation was one, a first derivative in time and a second derivative in, in um, space. So that means that we need one Initial condition, that's the time component, and we need two boundary conditions, which, which means that we, uh, which we've shown just at the front here, right? That 
we have a boundary condition at x equals 0 and a boundary condition at x equals infinity. Okay, so, so the boundary conditions are the concentration at x equals 0 for all time are, is going to be uh, equal to the surface concentration, right? And this is for t uh, greater than 0, right? So that's the first one. And also the concentration uh, at infinity for all time is going to be equal to whatever that initial concentration was C naught for all t greater than zero. And then our initial condition, right, uh, is that uh, is that the concentration in the material for all x at time zero is equal to C naught. Okay? So that's for x greater than or equal to zero and between there and infinity. Okay? So there's our boundary conditions and initial condition. Uh, I'm, again, I'm just going to give you the solution uh, in just a second, but I want to talk a little bit, little bit about the applicability of the solution I'm about to give you. So when can we use a semi-infinite bar, right? Because we know that we never really have a semi-infinite bar. Okay? So we never have a semi-infinite bar. Okay, but the solution that we're going to develop here is going to be valid as long as the bar is at least longer than 10 times the square root of d uh, times the time. Okay, so, but the solution is valid for bars longer than approximately, approximately 10 times the square root of d times t. Okay, so that's when it's applicable. Okay, so if that's the problem, uh, the solution of equation one, subject to the boundary conditions and initial condition that we just defined, uh, is given as follows. Okay, the concentration at, X, at the position x minus the initial concentration c naught divided by the surface concentration minus the initial concentration is equal to. 1 minus the error function of x over uh, 2 times the square root of dt. Okay? Call that equation 2. Okay? And I'll define, I'll say where the error function is given as follows. Uh, the error function of some variable z is equal to 2 divided by the square root of pi times the integral from 0 to z of e to the negative y squared dy. Okay? Call that equation 3. Okay? And if and in the olden days, uh, this would be something you would look up in a table and then interpolate for whatever ver uh, value that you want. However, uh, we, can, we can also just use MATLAB to calculate it. Okay? So in MATLAB, uh, you can just type ERF of whatever your whatever whatever value you want in there, right? So the ERF function is a built-in function in MATLAB that will use a, this lookup table and compute the value that you want. Okay. So you're probably feeling a little uncomfortable with what this looks like. So let me just graphically show you uh, what the solution uh, roughly looks like. Okay. So the solution given in equation two uh, takes the following form. Okay, so let's let's draw a picture of what this looks like. So we'll have our y-axis, that'll be concentration. This will be our x-axis along the bar. So this will be c of x. Okay, and let's say that this value here, let's call that c naught, that's the initial concentration. Okay, and let's say up here at this point, this is CS, this is the surface concentration. So initially, you'll have a curve. <coughs> so initially, uh, the surface is going to have the surface concentration. Uh, so it's going to dip down and then at some time, let's say, we know that it's going to do something like this and approach that that uh, the initial concentration as we get further out. 
let's say that this happens at time uh, over uh, at time t1 this is what the concentration profile looks like okay at some other time call it t2 when we've had more time to diffuse then you'll have something that looks like this right as we're diffusing more and more material into the bar call that t2 and then finally let's say at some time t3 something even more like this right call this t3 and so this is of course this is for the case where t1 is less than t2 which is less than t3 okay okay something to note from equation two even though it may look uh, unfamiliar to you uh, in equation two the quantity x over the square root of dt uh, is some this non-dimensional quantity that actually governs the entire diffusion process so in equation two the quantity x over the square root of uh, dt uh, is a non-dimensional quantity that governs the entire diffusion process okay and actually uh, the solution to the partial differential equation would involve uh, using this uh, non-dimensional quantity uh, x over the square root of dt to transform the partial differential equation uh, into a nonlinear ordinary differential equation uh, for solution that would that's that's how you could solve that okay but for our purposes this is important okay for our purposes this allows us to simply relate time or distance that pertains to some specific concentration to some other equivalent time or distance that may not be the same. Okay, so I'll, and I'll give you an example in a second. But let me write this down. So this allows uh, us to relate time or distance pertaining to a specific concentration to some other equivalent time or distance. Let me give you an example. So let's say that after uh, one hour, uh, the concentration of some uh, diffusing species uh, at a distance of one millimeter from the surface is 0.01. Okay. What depth is going to have that concentration of 0.01 uh, after four hours? Okay. Okay. So how do we how do we answer this? Well, um, this kind of a question. Uh, can be answered without recourse to let's say an error function or something like that okay so let's write down the equation uh, that we got from equation two and and see what this means so we had right that c of x uh, minus c naught is equal to cs minus c naught right sorry not equal it's divided by uh, is equal to one minus the error function times uh, x divided by uh, 2 times the square root of dt. Okay. This term, the cx term in both cases, is 0 0.01. Whatever c0 and cs are, this term is there, uh, is, is 0 0.01, right? That's what we asked for. c0 is the same for both cases, and so is cs. So we can say that the left hand side here is constant. Okay. What that means is that if the left-hand side is constant, the right-hand side must be constant. Okay, so this must be constant. Okay, and the only way that that can happen is if x over the square root of dt is constant. Okay, so how do we solve this then? Well, we can just set up a... A, uh, a ratio now we can say that uh, x1 over the square root of d times t1 and you could actually use it if the d change that could be the case too as long as this is this if this is constant then uh, you can say x over square root of dt is constant in this case the diffusion constant isn't changing so we'll just leave that as d that's equal to uh, x2 over the square root of dt2 right so we know that x1 is one millimeter we want to figure out what x2 is. So we can just uh, simply find this and say that x2 is going to be equal to x1 times the square root of t2 over t1, right? Which in our case will then be one millimeter. That's x1. 
and times the square root of four hours over one hour, which the square root of four is just two, and so our answer is just two millimeters. And we never had to solve for an error function or anything like that. We can just look at the nature of the problem and what's being asked, okay? So that's that's all you're really gonna need to know. Uh, if, if you need to do something beyond that and you have to compute the error function, uh, you can use MATLAB to do that. Uh, or, or you can do an interpolation from a table if you want, but uh, I think using MATLAB is, is easier. Um, and, and that's sort of the, the solution that we want to work with uh, going forward in this class.